Now at 6, sad news out of New Bern. What new details police are releasing after a shooting there Tuesday night? We are also digging deeper into Governor Roy Cooper's vetoes on three bills involving transgender children. Will Republicans override these vetoes? Plus, we're following up on storm damage from last night. Photos like this are coming in from Duplin County. We'll take you there live. And we're also headed to the scene where just 24 hours ago, fire crews were working on a church fire and down power lines across Greenville Boulevard. What those officials are saying tonight. That and much more coming up in less than one minute. Now, it's your forecast first from Storm Team 9. Thankfully, it was a much more settled day of weather outside today, but still some thunderstorms to be found. Typical summertime variety stuff so far, though. 86 degrees here in Greenville, 85 in Washington. Many of these numbers are below what we saw yesterday, but the humidity levels more than make up the difference. Feels like it's nearly 100 in Greenville, but truth be told, that observation was made right just about before the cooling thunder showers started moving in, and it's been raining here for the past few minutes on our Live Eye 9 camera and right here on our studio. You can see a little pocket of severe weather over towards Cumberland County just outside of our viewing area. Thankfully, everything has been sub-severe locally so far. We'll continue to monitor and talk about thunderstorm potential for the weekend coming up. The longest running newscast in the east starts now. On your side, this is WNCT 9 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight on your News at 6. I'm Ken Watlington. Angie Casada has the evening off. We begin tonight following developments out of a shooting in New Bern the night of July 4th. Initially, that shooting injured a one-year-old girl and a 22-year-old man. Today, we learned the baby sadly has died from her injuries. Now on your side, Abigail Velas joins us tonight from New Bern with the latest. Abigail. Ken, a tragic outcome to that incident. This morning, New Bern police told us that Neilani Sheptok sadly passed away last night at ECU Medical Center after being transferred there from this facility here at Carolina East. Now, police say it happened on the 1000th block of LaGrange Street in New Bern at about 10 p.m. Tuesday night. I spoke to a number of people in the community, but most declined to be on camera. Now, some told me that shootings like this are not as rare as they used to be, but this one resident says it's still shocking that it happened normally this is a good neighborhood yeah i mean incidents has happened before but that's everywhere and a one-year-old how how did that happen that night we all thought everything was fireworks Now, the extent of details we have is limited right now as New Bern PD is continuing their investigation into this incident. And while that happens, a new trend on social media is developing. People are using the hashtag justice for Neilani and pink heart emojis to show their condolences and solidarity with the family at this time. Now, like we mentioned, it is a developing story and WNCT will keep you up to date on air and online as new information becomes available. Live in New Bern, Abigail Velez 9 on your side. Abigail Thanks. Also across the east tonight, police in Elizabeth City are investigating a shooting that left three teenagers hurt. They say it happened yesterday afternoon on Speed Street. A 16-year-old has serious injuries. Another 16-year-old and a 17-year-old were also shot. They are in stable condition tonight. The shooting comes just days after a shooting on Harrington Road and just two months after two teenage girls were hurt in a shooting off of South Road Street. Anyone with information about yesterday's shooting is urged to contact the police department. In Rocky Mount, police say they arrested three people for their possible roles in a shooting. During the arrest, they also found these nine guns. Police say the shooting happened Monday night on Clark Street. One 17-year-old was shot and sent to the hospital. Investigators say the shooting involved gang-related activity. If you have any information about this shooting, you're urged to call the Rocky Mount Police Department. And in Roanoke Rapids, police are looking for this man on your screen. His name is Zachary Deem, and he's wanted for stealing money through the Cash App. Investigators found out he was sending money from someone's bank account to another account through the app. If you know any information about Deem or know where he is, you're urged to call the Halifax County Sheriff's Office or Halifax County Crime Stoppers. And to find out more information about these stories, you can just head over to our website. We have our crime tracker section available on our homepage with all your crime news from right here in the east and across the state. Again, that's on the top of WNCT.com. 
Storms rolled across eastern North Carolina, dumping several inches of rain last night in some areas, and it caused this scene along Greenville Boulevard. We first showed it to you live during our 6 o'clock news yesterday. Power lines coming down on top of the busy road, and it sparked a small fire at Parker's Chapel Free Will Baptist Church. Now to your side, Sarah Gray Barr caught up with church leaders today, as well as Greenville Utilities officials to find us more. She joins us now from the church with the latest. So, Sarah Gray, what do these repair efforts look like? Ken, repair efforts are well underway, those with the church tell me, and they add they'll be ready in time for Sunday service. I also spoke with the Greenville Utilities Commission about what cleanup efforts have looked like. Officials with the GUC tell me they started getting calls about power outages around 4.45 p.m. yesterday. By 5.40, all but three customers had their power restored. All repairs were completed by 2 a.m., including the power poles outside of the church. GUC says these wooden electric distribution poles were not found by straight line winds. So our crews, um, when they got out there, they reroute the power as quickly as they can, safely as they can to get as many customers back online while they do repairs. So that's why they were able to get customer, most of the customers back online so fast. And then they work through the night to repair those damage, repair, replace the poles um, entirely. And then of course that means the lines as well, having to restring the lines on the poles. Garner added approximately 1,600 customers experienced power outages yesterday. Those with the church say they're blessed as 4th of July celebrations canceled their usual Wednesday night meetings. There could have been more than 200 congregation members in this church yesterday, but thanks to the holiday, only staff was in the building. Those with the church say that no one was injured. Live in Greenville, Sarah Gray Barr, 9 on your side. Sarah Gray, thanks. And those storms also affecting our southern counties. People in one Duplin County town saw some flash flooding that was even affecting some of the busiest roads in that area. Now to your side's Claire Curry joins us live in Wallace tonight with more from neighbors and town leaders. Claire. Ken NC41 is looking much different than it did Wednesday evening with a large amount of rain in a short period of time washing the road out. I just saw like a bunch of dark clouds come in. He was like, you know, we should wait it out. And then next thing we know, we look outside and it's pouring like really hard. One employee at El Mariachi says he was on the road during the storm. It was like kind of flooded, like it was really bad. So I don't know, I kind of had to stop because my car, like the water was gushing up. It was pretty bad. And then I had to stop because I got scared to drive. The town of Wallace says roads like Sutherland Street, Duplin Street, and even Main Street were also affected. Through Floyd and Florence, and you know, we got through those. I mean, we had a lot of damage, a lot of flooding, but nothing that extreme across the roads like we had yesterday. According to the town, the fire department received around 19 calls for assistance during the downpour. You're looking about three and a half inches of rain in, within an hour, and you know, the system did pretty well. Within an hour, everything had drained off. And adds they work alongside NCDOT to maintain and improve the roadways and ditches in the area. We did uh, probably half a million dollars worth of work last year. We've got about a million dollars worth of projects going on this year. Because stormwater is a big concern for the town. The town manager reminds residents that whenever there is significant rainfall to stay off the roadways until it clears out. Live in Wallace, Claire Curry, 9 on your side. All right, Claire, thanks. And you can always get the latest updates on weather like last night's or today's or any potential severe weather situation by downloading the Storm Team 9 app. It's free right now in the Google and Apple app stores. Congressman Don Davis is coming back home to the east tomorrow. He'll be in Greenville visiting the Pharmaceutical Services Network. That's at 1130 tomorrow morning. After that, he's headed to Washington County to visit the Washington Regional Medical Center in Plymouth. He'll be there at 1.30. Nine on your side will have more from this visit tomorrow starting on your news at 5. And Representative Davis is holding a telephone town hall tonight. It starts at 7 o'clock, less than an hour from now. You can voice your concerns and discuss important issues impacting ENC. To join in on that call, just call the number 855-274-9423. After Governor Roy Cooper vetoed three bills impacting the LGBTQ community, Republicans are scheduling votes to override him next week. The governor describes the bills as a triple threat of political culture wars. One bill restricts doctors from performing gender transition procedures on minors. 
Another bill passed limits how gender identity and sexuality are taught in elementary schools. The third bill blocks transgender females from competing on women's sports teams. It's absolutely common sense. I mean, it is a safety issue and it's an integrity and in women's sports issue. This is a crisis uh, and it's hard to overstate the level of harm uh, that happens for transgender young people and LGBTQ young people. Opponents of these bills already have said they plan to challenge them in court. Let's hear from you tonight in our Vote Now on 9 poll. We're asking, do you think Republicans should override Governor Cooper's vetoes on the transgender bills? To vote, just scan this QR code right here on the bottom right side of your screen. Use the free 9 on your side app and find Vote Now on 9 in the menu. Or simply go over to WNCT.com slash vote. We'll have the latest results tonight on your late news here on WNCT. One group is putting our state near the bottom third of the nation for safety of people in the LGBTQ plus community. The group SafeHome.org are basing these rankings off what the state's lawmakers are doing. Those opinions come from 1,000 people identifying as LGBTQ plus. Coming up tonight at 10 o'clock on Eastern North Carolina CW and your news at 11 here on WNCT. We'll hear more from Safe Home analysts about this ranking. Today, the State Board of Elections voted unanimously for a new voting system for our state. Election systems and software is one of several state-certified voting systems that North Carolina counties can choose from. By state law, paper ballots will continue to be used for all elections. Voting machines are not connected to the Internet and actually have no capacity to do so. The new system is expected to be ready by the general election in 2024. At 6, a new study is showing how contaminated our drinking water really is. After the break, we'll tell you about the dangerous chemicals researchers are finding. Also coming up next, your complete Storm Team 9 seven-day forecast. We've got some cooling summertime thunderstorms today in some counties. We'll show you where the activity is located now and what lies ahead for the weekend.